Good morning, Professor Chomsky. Uh, I'm a biologist, and actually the question I have is sort of a follow-up to this one. When a biologist looks at something as complex as the FLN, the recursion device ostensibly is, the first question, two questions you ask is what is it for and what is it from? That is, what did it evolve from? And you suggested that maybe it didn't evolve, or at least that's not the right way to look at well, it. it. It evolved, but I, uh, the I'm way it's property molecules right. getting into the right. cell evolved. Well, it's also evolution. So its properties, in other words, on that view, are more contingent on its function, its its contemporary function, rather than its evolutionary origin. Well, see, even that's misleading because th there's a factual question about what the function is. I mean, the usual assumption about language has been that its function is to facilitate communication. Right. This, I've never believed that. And this point of view takes a very different approach. Mm -hmm. It says the function, if you want to use the right. word, of language is to link interface conditions. And when you look, here it's just an empirical question. And when you look closely at the structure of language, I could mention some cases. I think what you find is that the computational system is optimal is apparently optimal with regard to linking the interface, right. but is very non-optimal with regard to communication. Uh, I see. So but I actually have a specific question about its origin. So it, there is a case to be made that animal minds evaluate contingent circumstances and control their mo purposeful motion in response to those, that those systems are in fact hierarchically nested and combinatorial. There's actually an argument to be made that that's true. That looks remarkably like the FLN. That looks remarkably like the recursion device. And if that's true, in turn, then it means that the properties of the recursion device, perhaps including some that look suboptimal for its function, are in fact like the bones in a bird's wing. They are historical accidents rather than functional properties of the system. Could you uh, perhaps explore that just for a yeah. moment, whether you like or dislike that view? There's a difference between hierarchical structure and recursion. I mean, there's all kinds of, take say the yeah. birds and a, you know the, right. the bones and I got five fingers, uh, right. other animal has three, you know, and right. so on. That's hierarchical structure, but it's not recursion. There's no recursive process that uh, gives you an arbitrary number of fingers, each stage of which has particular significance. Remember, this recursion is not like, uh, you know, walking. I mean, you take one step and then two steps and then three steps. Right. Uh, every stage in the process has particular significance, determined significance at two interfaces. And that's something completely different than hierarchical structure. Yeah, I was actually referring to things like Biederman's view of perception, for example, that it's, that it's inherently combinatorial and hierarchically nested. Do you like or dislike it, that view? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, in fact, maybe the, we could have gone into this, in fact, I mentioned it, that the, uh, could be that the recursive systems uh, not only Maybe they're connected with insect, whatever's involved in insect navigation, but they could also be uh, involved with what a lot of perceptual psychologists call the rules of vision. You know, the rules that uh, make you see uh, uh, some object, uh, some presentation as a three-dimensional object in motion. I mean, there's a very pretty well understood by now computational procedure that uh, determines that from very few presentations, like three tachistoscopic yep. presentations, yep. Uh, get you to see a rigid object in motion. Okay, there's some kind of principles involved in that, and it wouldn't be outlandish to assume that those what are called rules of seeing, you know, are similar in some way to whatever's going on here. Yeah. I mean, look, this didn't come from nowhere, you know. The question is where it came from. and. Uh, in my view, an exciting and not implausible conclusion is that it just comes from the way nature works uh, with right. computational systems, and therefore you're going to find it all over the place. I guess if, yeah. if there's there's one more question, I'm, yeah. I'm really again, as a biologist, struck by why linguists are, I'm not sure the word is hostile, but apparently indifferent to this question of what language is for. A biologist look at that and, and say that, look at language, look at its sophistication, and it's, it's Paley's watch on a heath. It's a complex thing that can only ultimately be produced as a result of its adaptive consequences. The only ad apparent adaptive consequences are the ones we think that leap immediately to mind, that is exchange of information, cooperative no, exchange see, of information. See, if that's what leaps to mind, it's just a mistake. I mean, just look at the, I mean, if you want to look well, at Well, it leaps the, to the mind of almost every biologist okay, in the world, I must tell you. I mean, when you, uh, the notion of function is a very, you know, loose and vague notion. We all know that. So what's the function of the skeleton? 
I mean, is it to keep you from falling into a puddle on the ground, or is it to store calcium? Or is well, it if it's properly construed, it's not narrow. To ask what the function of a bird wing is is a well-focused question. Maybe, but uh, you know, if you actually look at the history of it, it's not so well-focused. The evolution of it, it's quite complicated, a lot of exaptation and so on and so forth. But uh, it, the notion of what a function is is a very vague notion. However, what is usually assumed, plausibly, is you can get some guide to what the function is by looking at the characteristic use. Okay, yes. well, let's take the characteristic use of language. Characteristic use of language is for thought, not for communication. Almost all language use, close to 100%, is internal. My understanding was that that's controversial. That is, in it's particular, that most thought is, in fact, not linguistic. Oh, that's another question. Yes. There could be plenty of thought that's not linguistic, right. but I'm asking a different question. Uh -huh. What's the use of language? Statistically speaking, it's almost all internal. Uh, if you want to check that, just introspect for a couple of hours. Well, but, but, that's, ba <laughs> but that's, based on, that's based on introspection. I could make no, the counter- based on observation. Well, that introspection is a kind of observation. Yes, I, I agree mean, with that. if we had an outside way of looking at introspection, we'd find the same thing. But an equivalently plausible interpretation of that is that that appears to be true subjectively because the purpose of language is to prepare our thoughts for the ultimate purpose of social communication. Well, you can it doesn't say this control you, thought. Yeah, you can sense. say this if you want, but that's now we're off way and out. No, of those are equal. Those are competing models no, no, that should not. be susceptible I mean, to test. Yeah, all we know is all we know is the following: that the overwhelming use of language close to 100% is internal. And when you think about what that internal stuff is, it has very little to do with communication. Like you can spend half your life uh, obsessing because somebody criticized you 10 years ago. You don't expect to communicate it, but that's the kind of thing that goes on your mind all the time. Or well, you, you can, you know, you can think about. <laughs> but all ostensibly, you were preparing for an, for an inadvertent meeting with that person. Are you right? maybe, maybe it's somebody, an argument. Maybe you somebody died. You know, I mean, it's just not. You know, it's just factually well, not that, yeah. correct. It's it, it's true. It is that an it's, arguable point. It's true that look, everything's arguable, but the overwhelming evidence is that internal thought is playing some function for us. Yeah. You know, planning, um, agonizing, uh, whatever we do with right. it, and some tiny piece of it ends up as being communication. This Incidentally, plenty of other things are involved in communication too. Now, it could, you can always make up a story. That's one of the things about evolutionary fa fairy tale manufacturing. Or about all of science. But they're not they're, they're all about of, stories, yes, they yeah, are. Not Testable all, stories, not hopefully. All of science, just so stories are particularly prominent in this domain. But if you want to use uh, plausible arguments, like characteristic use tells you something about function, uh, then I think you'd have to say that the, that the function of language in this loose sense is uh, for, for thought. Some of it ends up being communication, very small parts. In fact, even the part that is externalized is communication only in a very odd sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, like if you meet somebody at a, I mean, it's very hard for people to be next to each other and not to talk to each other. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, it's like dogs looking at, you know, another's eye. You just have to talk to each other. Uh, so if you meet some, you're standing with somebody at a bus stop, it's just uncomfortable if you're not talking to them. So you talk to them about the weather or the baseball right. game or something. That's not communication. That's just, uh, it's, it's sometimes called phatic communication. Yeah. It's just a sure. way of establishing human relations. Social. Uh, human, but that's not communication in the sense of transmitting information or anything. Uh, if by communication you just mean interacting with other people, mm -hmm. well, yeah, okay. Uh, then uh, it would turn out, if you do it descriptively, I think it would turn out like this. Uh, overwhelmingly, language is internal. I mean, it's literally close to 100%. Uh -huh. uh, some of it is externalized. Of the part that's externalized, a lot of it is just uh, phatic communication, meaning right. we want to be part of a group or we don't right. want to feel hostile to each other. Like, right. you don't look at a person, you don't, this, you know, like gaze is always off to the side or you stay at a certain mm -hmm. distance from somebody right. and that sort right. of thing. A lot of it just seems to be like that. And some very small part of it right. is communication in some independent sense of the word communication. So you well, you can make up a story saying that it's that very small part that mm -hmm. drives the system, but we have no evidence for it. Furthermore, if you look at the mechanics of the system, now we're getting into more technical aspects. I think you can show that a lot of the mechanics of the system are badly designed for communication and well designed for linking the interfaces. Actually, one. Mm -hmm important asp case of this, which is, if, you, if, you, uh, if any of you are writing parsing programs, you know, programs where 
you're trying to do uh, automated parsing. Uh, there's one overwhelming problem that you always face, and that is uh, a word comes along like a WH word, you know, what or something like that, and you know because of the way language works that there's going to be, it's going to be linked to some position in the sentence, but that position happens to be a, a not heard, it's a gap. So you have the problem of taking a word who and figuring out what unexpressed, uh, there's no space, there's no break, there's mm -hmm. no nothing, but what point in the utterance is it connected with? Just think how easy it would be if uh, you repeated it. So if you, if you didn't say, what did you see, but what did you see what? Okay, then the problem's trivial. Uh, however, that's computationally more difficult. If you look at the way our beliefs about the computational systems, if they are recursive as in the way we think, that would involve more computation uh, for linking the interfaces. So here's a pretty striking case, and there are quite a lot more, where the system seems to be mechanically designed so that it reduces computation and increases the problem of, of uh, perception. And I think there are a lot of okay. cases like this. Susan? Thank you. Thank you.